Okay, um, first of all, I think it's important to know how excited we are about, you know, opening the season at home. You know, I think with a regional opponent, uh, tons of tradition at Grambling, and certainly uh, this could be a great experience for our players uh, to be right here in our backyard at home, you know, with our city, our town, our fans, uh, our university right here at Cajun Field. So we're, we're looking forward to that opportunity. You know, the question I think we all have to ask ourselves, and it's this way every year at the beginning of a season, is who are we, you know, as a team? And I think this will be our first opportunity to create our own identity for this team, this 2018 Raging Cajun football team. Uh, what type of energy we're going to play with, what type of enthusiasm, what type of uh, purpose do we have, what type of togetherness uh, will we reflect. Uh, and I really believe in the work that we've done so far, and I'm excited about what these young men are going to do on Saturday. Uh, regardless of rankings, regardless of preseason polls, um, you know, our focus has to be on our mindset and our preparation, uh, maximizing our focus, our self-discipline, uh, our attention to detail relative to preparing for the game. One of the things that we're in the process of doing is mastering this Sunday to Saturday routine that can become so critical in college football. Uh, and what that looks like for each individual player, what that looks like for each member of the organization relative to the role that they play for our team. Um, Grambling presents a number of challenges. You know, Coach Fobbs uh, has provided some stability there. He certainly has had some continuity with his staff. Um, and they present different problems for you in all three phases. I think offensively, they've done a good job of spreading the field. Uh, they do have five offensive linemen with significant experience coming back. Uh, they've got a good group of skill players with their running backs and their receivers. Uh, and they have a number of transfers, junior college players, college transfers, uh, at quarterback, at running back, at tight end. Uh, and certainly on defense, these guys present an attacking style. They take chances. Um, they do a good job of mixing it up. They have an identity. They know who they are. Coordinator's been there for a number of years. Uh, and they, they have a good comprehension of who they are and what they want to be. So overall, a uh, great challenge for our, our football team and certainly as a first-year staff uh, and the first-year head coach, we're excited about this opportunity. We're going to play both, both young men. Um, we're going to announce later this week who will actually start the game. Uh, but I think both of these guys have earned the opportunity to play. I think they both have uh, the respect of their teammates and both have proved that they can execute at a high level. Uh, and I, I think that they've got great relationship. And I think that it won't be a problem for our team. And I think as we go, uh, we'll see where that ends up, you know, but certainly Andre being the senior has had a tremendous training camp. He's worked as hard as any player on our team uh, relative to what he's invested in this season. Uh, and I think Levi is a unique young man who has tremendous leadership capability, uh, has a tremendous effect on his teammates, uh, and he could be a spark for us. So I think both players are very effective players, uh, and I think that you'll see both of those guys on Saturday at some point. Coach, with no early week two off by week, is the game three starter more accurate than who the game one starter can be? I think that's a good good way to look at it. I think relative to the big picture here, um, and given how both young men have prepared and how both young men have proven themselves, uh, it would be different if one guy had significantly won over the team. you know. But I think both guys have proven themselves to the team. Uh, no matter what direction we ended up going, I think that we'd be in good shape. So um, we'll we'll put, we'll provide you guys with a name that will run out there the first series later this week. Uh, but today, I think that's the big statement is that we've got two young men that deserve to play. Um, we're going to play both on Saturday. Is that something that you foresee happening throughout the course of the season? Do you run the count of both, or is that something you have to decide now? Or? Yeah, exactly the way you phrase that is is the way I feel about it. You know, I think that it's a, it's a situation where we've got a senior who's talented, he's got a really effective passer, he's proved to be a student of the game, 
um, and a guy who can move our offense up and down the field and distribute the ball and make great decisions. But at the same time, you've got a young player who's a dynamic leader, you know, that has the respect of his teammates that can provide a spark for our football team. When you start with Grambling and your quarterback is now going and leading rusher is going, does that make it a little bit more difficult to figure out maybe what they plan to do this year? I think the biggest variable in the game is the fact that Coach Fobbs is going to call the offense and they've lost their offensive coordinator. You know, offensive coordinator left for a head coaching opportunity. Uh, they named the offensive line coach the coordinator. Uh, so, you know, Coach Fobbs' history uh, offensively relative to maybe what we have on film, uh, I think that's one of the variables in the game is adjusting to what we see from their offense within the game and early in the game. Quarterbacks aren't the only four that you have. Um, Barnes and Bradley and McDowell and Higgins and mm -hmm. Ames and, and Deuce. Are those two of the particular ones that are sort of carrying along either way? Yeah, I think so. But it really is a reflection of the competition and belief in both players. You know, really basically saying when we put or there that, hey, both these guys are starters and they deserve that recognition, you know. One may get to run out first, and probably that's a reflection of what type of week they had in practice. But you're going to see both those players at some point during the game, probably in a 50-50 you know, type scenario. So, and a lot of guys that maybe are not listed as starters are going to play significant snaps in the game. Uh, and we hope to build quality depth, and we hope to have more players that can play winning football uh, that can earn a role so that you know our depth becomes valuable down the stretch. We can you know, have a cumulative effect on the opponent and play better in the second half. So uh, I think overall that's the big message for our team is, hey, there's, every day we've got an opportunity and each player has an opportunity to prove themselves by what they put on the practice film. Are they dependable, accountable? Can we trust you? Will you do your job and can you perform at a high level when it really counts? All right, our kickoffs, something you're going to decide this time, maybe who shows the strongest way during the week and is that something you might do each week yeah, I think a lot of it have to do with performance throughout the week, and certainly that's an area of our team where we want to clear, we want to clear that picture up as we go forward. So, um, but Calvin's done a good job with that um, throughout training camp, and he's he's been a little more consistent there. But certainly Kyle has come in and earned the respect of everybody in the building uh, relative to what he can do. We have. We, we basically kind of set those depth charts, you know, the last three or four practices relative to who we're going to start repping for the game. But I do certainly think that within the week here, there's going to be competition and evaluation of the practice tape relative to, you know, who's going to actually get to be a starter on each unit. So that's one of the areas where we have lots of competition on the team and lots of guys are working toward proving themselves and earning a role on the team. So. But yes, we have narrowed that down quite a bit. With the new kickoff rule, do you have the option to sit there catching the, the kickoff and bring it to the 25? You've got an experienced guy back there in, in Raymond. What is going to determine how you're going to handle how you're going to do it? I think each week's a little bit different relative to the talent of the kicker of the other team, you know, relative to where the ball comes down, what type of hang time we're talking about. Uh, what type of speed on the return team, you know, where are the players relative to when the ball gets caught. Uh, and each week you make a little bit different decision based on the, off of those variables. So, uh, but certainly we want to be aggressive in those areas because we, we feel like we have some weapons back there that can make a difference in the game. How important is this to the first four days leading the first game is getting off to a good start? You know, both teams kind of figure out what, what they do well, what they don't do well. So how important is this getting off to a good start and you know, winning that first quarter? Well, I think each week you want to start fast, but I think it's important. And we've talked a lot about, um, you know, the nature of this game is that it creates adversity. You know, there's not going to be many days at the park where bad things don't happen. You know, and, and our ability to stay together, to really use that as an opportunity, not necessarily as, hey, I'm the victim here, I want to make excuses or blame others, but really challenge our players to come together when we – you know, encounter those difficult times. And I think it's what makes football unique. It's a game of momentum. 
Uh, it's a game of responding to adversity. It really, um, what's your mental toughness relative to the situations in the game? And hopefully we put our players through an off season, try to simulate some of those difficult things that they'll encounter uh, when we start playing the games. How much should we I think that that's one of the areas where I feel like we uh, have done a good job. I think especially being a first-year staff, I thought our uh, template that we used for this summer was really effective. We were maybe a little bit further ahead. Um, you could notice that the first seven, ten days of training camp. So uh, we're, we we used this summer, you know, and I think the new rules that were made a couple of years ago, allowing meetings uh, and certainly – the opportunity to grow leadership at the player level is really what the OTs, OTAs are about. Uh, but certainly having the opportunity to meet with the players a couple hours a week presents, you know, especially for a first-year staff, uh, presents a great opportunity for us. And I think we, we took advantage of that. Coach, at this point, uh, what are still some, some areas on the team that you have uh, certain concerns about? Uh, I think that, you know, we – we're a little banged up in the defensive line, you know. I think uh, relative to the depth, the quality depth that we have there, um, we've added some good players. Uh, and you know, on defense in particular is where we've had an influx of personnel. You know, 15 new scholarship players, three players moved from offense to defense. So I think just how those guys perform, being relatively new, uh, is a big, you know, part of our growth as a football team here of the next, especially early in the season, you know, really improving each week uh, and learning what to expect and how to prepare. I think all those things are, you know, probably, you know, the biggest question mark, you know, not only I have, but most people have about our team. Is anybody else this Saturday besides the offensive season guys? Uh, we have a couple of guys that are questionable. Sammy Ocho is questionable and Lorenzo McCaskill was questionable due to an ankle injury that he sustained during practice. So both those guys will be rehabbing throughout the week, and as we get closer to the game, we'll know a little bit more. But, you know, in general, our philosophy is if they can't practice, they can't play. So, um, you know, we'll know more as we get to Tuesday and Wednesday practice whether or not those guys are able to take the necessary reps to be prepared to play. He is. You know, Chase is uh, out of his – cast now he's in a boot he's uh working with our strength conditioning staff with the training staff certainly now that we've started school out of training camp he's been able to come to meetings uh he's doing really well so we anticipate chase being able to get back where he can practice football at the, you know probably the last third of the season um we'll be able to make some decisions about his future at that point yeah our team's recovery is coming along really well um, and certainly you know he's a guy who he could have another year of eligibility and could you know basically put him at himself in position maybe to compete for the job next year you know that's kind of the big picture for him whether or not he can do that physically or he wants to do that but those are things that are down the road that we'll cross that bridge when we get to it I think it's highly unlikely it is his kicking me, you know, um, but you know, you never say never, right? Um, I think that the big thing that we're excited about is the stability that Kyle has brought to our football team and how he's proven to be a consistent performer day in and day out in practice. Good time for a couple more, please. How do you think the team responded to the mob game? I thought it was good, you know, tons of mistakes, not only, it's not necessarily just the players, I mean, it's the staff, it's it's every person in the organization relative to, hey, we've got this amount of time and we need to be really efficient, get the most out of our time, get the most out of our meetings. Uh, certainly within that 20 hour rule, we have to be, when we're on the field, when the clock's running, we've got to get the most of that time. So we'll be much improved, you know, uh, yesterday was our first Thursday format uh, that we did and we you know we've got several notes there that we'll talk about later today to, to improve at but 
we'll go back. Today's our first time repeat, repeating a Monday in-season routine. And from here on, we've done these things before. We just need to be better at them this time. And just from the scrimmage that you guys have done, how prepared do you think your team is to execute the adjustments you need to make in the game to see in person? And how prepared do you think you guys are to execute during the game adjustments you have to do? Well, it's actually easier uh, to make in-game adjustments, you know, than it is during the scrimmage because you have to call plays the entire scrimmage, you know. So uh, I think that, you know, we have an opportunity to have time between series not only to give those guys a break physically, but we can make adjustments within the game relative to what's happening. Um, we, we've got a good plan. We've executed that plan. Uh, and certainly we'll get better at that each and every week as we go forward.